All right, let's get this show on the road. It's about two. Hey, friends, well, how are you doing? How's it going? How Very are you, good. Uh, how are you liking your newfound freedom? Do you uh, do anything fun recently now that uh, the the big bad COVID is starting to withdraw a little bit? Have any big plans? Yeah. No, we'll yeah see the family, but we're still waiting. Uh, it's not like you in the U.S. Uh, in Quebec here, it's uh, we still are you know like students are going to school one day out of two. Restaurants are closed except for takeout, uh, so it's going to release in the next one or two week. So in, with restaurant, we'll be able to eat outside, but not inside. So it's going uh, slowly. yeah, we're we're definitely uh, trying to get into that summer vibe a little earlier. Uh, yeah, down to a restaurant and all the full capacity, all the plastic barriers are down. It's back uh, back to normal. But the part I'm not used to yet is some places you wear a mask, some places you don't. So we all just kind of like walk around with our masks, trying to decide whether or not yeah. people around us are wearing the mask. And then we kind of adjust as we go, whether or not people by us are wearing masks. So that, yeah. that's something I don't know how that'll play out as we go. So it's the same everywhere. It's uh, rules are confusing. And here they release two schedules. So depending on on the plan, you can do something or you can't. It also most of people here didn't get two shots, so it will depend if you got two or not. You will have different uh, uh, things allowed. So, but slowly, yeah. it's going towards uh, better days. Yeah, things are changing. Speaking of which, let's let's dive in. We've we've stalled to get anyone who's uh, running behind as much as possible. But now let's let's dive in to our presentation. Sound good? Yes. All right, so welcome everyone. Uh, we're diving into the Solid Experience webinar here. And what we're gonna be talking about today is how to decrease the number of clicks you do per day. The idea is that really when it comes down to it, we wanna save you time and we wanna make your life easier because we've all been there. We've all been the, the drafter who has a tight deadline, uh, you, you hate doing these repetitive tasks. And what we're going to be exploring today is a couple really cool things in the world of automation and macros and what we have to offer in terms of our experience and how we handle certain tasks. But before we get into that, let's take a step back and do a quick survey and see where everyone is at. So I'm going to kick off a poll here. So first things first, let's go ahead and launch the first survey. So. This one, how often do you stop and think to yourself, I spend too much time doing the same task over and over again? So the survey should be popping up and you should be able to respond here. And the idea is that, you know, what, how often do you find yourself really doing the same thing over and over again? Uh, you, you sit there and say, wow, I've spent literally an hour doing the same process. Oh, wow, looks like uh, everyone. I am not the only one who has spent hours and hours saving PDFs. Uh, all right, well, that's good to know. That's good to know. Uh, the next thing is, have you heard about macros inside of SolidWorks? So some people are familiar with the term. Some people have never heard about macros. So just trying to get a sense with everyone. Have you used macros? Is this, are we speaking a different language? Where do you fall? And it looks like, okay, so we have a good distribution coming up as we're doing this. So it looks like about half of everyone has used macros and uses them quite frequently, but some people don't use them, but they've heard of them. Uh, but good. So nobody, nobody thinks that macros are part of a dieting strategy. So we're at least uh, making progress on that front. Perfect. So we should be back to my screen here as we go through. Now, as we go, and I'm gonna go ahead and post in chat as well the link that's in here. You can also go via the uh, the QR code if you have a phone that'll instantly scan it. But basically, what we have here is the ability to check out our webinars. So we record tons and tons of webinars, tons and tons of online content in these types of webinar formats. So some, some of them are pretty short, some of them are a quick five, 10, 15 minute tech tips, and some of them are hour, an hour and a half long deep dives into different areas of SolidWorks and the surrounding products. So definitely check it out. Uh, the recording from this will be up there. And then of course, all the recordings from our past webinars, if you have some time to burn or are interested inside of any of the products that we offer, there's a ton of information. 
on our webinar page. But that being said, we're diving in. So util experts, what is it? What are we even talking about? Why are we trying to save you time? Let's kick it off. So I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Steven. I'm an applications engineer, obviously, with solid experience. And my background is more from the SolidWorks side. So I've been working with SolidWorks for a while, more from the support side. So I worked a little bit over at SolidWorks itself, providing tech support. And I've really moved into developing solutions with customers. So whether that's consulting or taking a look at their current workflows and trying to optimize what they're doing to get the most bang for their buck or to, to do the best you can with what you got, well, what you have. Because a lot of times, if you don't know something, then you're probably missing out on a ton of opportunity to have a better process. And so a lot of that is training and education and really trying to take a look at what you want to accomplish and the best way to do that. And that's that's what gets me going. That's what keeps me here is that I really enjoy that process and this education process, including webinars. But today we have the master of all things programming, the wizard, the kingpin of macros, Francois. So I'm going to switch it over to you, Francois. You can introduce yourself, the man who needs no introductions. I better deliver, huh? I, you, big things. We're expecting big things from you. Okay. So, so you're passing the control to me? I have passed it over to you. Let's let's hear about yeah, you. And let's, let's keep going. Let's dive in. That's good. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so my name is uh, Francois Racine. I'm with Solidec Experience since 1999. Uh, so I started as a support technician and uh, did some training, uh, did a lot of uh, SolidWorks and PDM implementations. But since the beginning, I was coding because I, uh, I'm, I almost did uh, programming instead of mechanical engineering at school. So, uh, so it was always an interest for me. So since the beginning, I'm working uh, on programming uh, tools like the utils experts that you'll see today. You won't see all the tools because uh, there are like more than 15, but these tools were born 20 years ago, uh, not only from myself, but from colleagues also. But uh, we still add new tools. We, uh, we enhance the tools also. So we, we have uh, plenty of ideas and, and we're, when we're missing ideas, then you, the customer, um, are good for that. Um, so, uh, so I always love programming and uh, it's a uh, very a pleasure to show you the tools today. Uh, I'm quite sure that at least two or three tools can fit with what you, you do. Uh, so since we show you tools that we did, it means that you can also program uh, inside works or PDM, which are my main two products. Uh, programming is not easy. Uh, it's, it's long to learn. Uh, and more if you never programmed. So, uh, so we also offer uh, programming services. So if you have some specific needs, we can uh, just sit together or sit or on the phone um, and, and just talk about your needs and we can deliver a solution for you. But if you need training support, we also offer that. So SolidWorks, so programming in SolidWorks is free. Uh, with PDM, you need PDM Pro, so it depends on, on the product, but most of the time there's no charge except maybe if you need to purchase a tool to do the programming, like Visual Studio. Um, so uh, the, I'll talk here about uh, two main subjects. Uh, so the new activation process and some PDM Experts uh, examples. Uh, PDM Experts is another uh, toolkit, uh, Utils Experts being our main toolkit. Uh, so when I talk about uh, new activation, of course, if you're new to the tools, you didn't know about the old activation. Um, so we changed the way uh, it works since uh, the Utils Experts 2021. Uh, so when you install the tool uh, and you start SolidWorks for the first time, you'll see a, a window asking you to activate. You can back the same. You can get back the same window using the menu you see here on the screen. So tools, solid experts, and then manage the activation of the tools. So this will bring this dialog uh, where you can, you see those two buttons at the bottom. So you can activate for an evaluation. So there's no cost. You can just click on this button, fill the form asking your name and all that. And then it will unlock the tools for 15 days. But if you get a code like the one we see uh, as uh, the serial number, um, then you just put this code and use the activate reactivate button and then you'll 
your activation will be good usually for something like one year. So I'm lucky here, my, my activation is good for 10 years. And someone asked me this morning uh, if uh, in 10 years I'll, I'll, I'll be um, retired. So the, the code will be good until I retired. And uh, I think I didn't answer. Okay. It's not because <laughs> I have a great bar beard that uh, I'm old. Okay. So that's experience. You, you can't uh, be older than like 26. That's, that's my guess, 20, 27 maybe. Thank you very much. So I'm in between. Uh, so uh, so yeah, I'll be still there in 10 years. Um, so so once it's, active, it's activated, you see this green uh, activated word, and then you can deactivate. Uh, so the code is usually good for, uh, not, not the, the code, but the activation, because the code, the serial number will never change. So the next year you will just uh, renew the tools and you can reactivate so that the date will update. So once your computer is activated, then you can disconnect from internet. It's a local license, uh, but if you need to reactivate or to deactivate, uh, you need internet. So why you, would you deactivate? It could be because you want to work from home. So you could deactivate your license at the office to reactivate uh, at home and vice versa. It's also required if you change the computer, uh, then you need to deactivate uh, unless the license is still taken. Uh, so th there's no live activation. It's a bit like if you have uh, SideWorks uh, standalone licenses, not floating, uh, you know probably about this principle where you, your computer is activated and then no one else can activate at the same time with the same serial number. So here the serial number we give you is valid for the whole company. Uh, so you won't have a, a different serial number for each uh, person. Um, so that's about it for for this section. Um, so it, it's quite easy to activate. And if you're interested, then just contact your sales representative. Uh, there's a charge for the tool. Uh, I think it's around 120 uh, per year per license. So uh, so just to contact your uh, representative. Uh, you'll also get my email address at the end of this presentation. So you can contact me or any, any, any way for any question or yeah, I like I like how easy you made it. It's it's basically the same way that SolidWorks functions in terms of activation, deactivation for standalone. It's very intuitive. Yeah, so it's, it's totally different, but uh, I mean separate. But yeah, we were highly inspired by by what SolidWorks did. So yeah, we try to make things easy. Our customer like that. Um, I, so our customers, I like that <laughs> exactly. It's awesome. The colleagues also. Uh, so before we go on with the utils experts, I just wanted to talk a bit about the PDM experts, which is a toolkit for PDM professional, uh, professional because PDM standard doesn't uh, offer the API, so we cannot program for standard. So for professional, yes, uh, it's included. So uh, so this toolkit is is newer than the utils experts that I said are 20 years ago, uh, old. Um, so the PDM experts is a batch of maybe a bunch of maybe eight tools. Uh, so here we see the PDM uh, administration interface and all these um, uh, SX item uh, shown in red are PDM add-ins. So the administrator can just install those add-ins, configure them, and often it's transparent for the users. So there's no demo for these tools because the user will use this like without knowing. Uh, so there are configuration tools and so it's really uh, integrated to PDM. One of the tool is, uh, and it's a new tool we released uh, one or two months ago, is a task viewer. So for those who know who don't know PDM, um, PDM there's a workflow. So let's say you approve a document, then PDM can run tasks. So as soon as a document is approved or sent for approval, uh, PDM can export a PDF file, a step, uh, it can print or even run a design checker uh, task. Uh, so users uh, don't know about the task. So let's say you approve something and you're wondering, is my PDF about to be created? Then here we created this task viewer uh, tool where you see the tasks that are uh, going to run and the task at the bottom that, that did run and if they failed or, or what. So, uh, so it's a read-only tool. You cannot cancel a task or bring it up to have your task made uh, earlier. Uh, it's only for viewing, but it's, uh, it's useful just for being able to know where it's like when you print something and you're wondering is it going to print now or in one hour uh, so that's a separate tool that the user can launch but if we talk about something that's more integrated 
This is the PDM interface. So uh, I won't go through PDM, but if I click on the file here, uh, there's something called the data card. Uh, so it's, it's like the custom properties. So usually the user needs to fill this by, by himself. But here we have a PDM expert integration where I can click this button and select items from a database. So here, let's say I go with bikes, uh, road bike, and then I can select a model and then OK. So now it fills a card. So that's PDM expert. So the user knows, but not really. Uh, you just have to click this button and the administrator set everything. So now I just need to click in the list and every list here when I click, uh, will uh, trigger a request in a database. So you can query to your ERP, you can query to PDM itself. So it, you can query to any SQL, SQL, SQL database. Uh, so when I click in this list, then the next one runs a, a query. So I can select uh, with these, uh, I call this interdependent list. So one list depends on the previous one. And then when you click OK, we're back to, whoop, I don't know what, went wrong, but uh, so I'm back to PDM and I just fill the rest. So um, that's kind of thing that PDM experts can, can bring. And of course, this functionality here that I shown does not exist in PDM uh, as it comes uh, out of the box. That's, that's phenomenal too, because that answers the age old problem of how do we have, say, an updated list of you know, accurate vendors or how do we make sure that we're integrating in the correct format for ERP? Yeah. Especially because I mean, take McMaster for a, <laughs> for a second. I mean, how do you write McMaster in a property? Uh, I've yeah. seen it probably six or seven ways. So the fact yeah. that then you can pull the data you need automatically. And it's from them. it's from a single source. So if the ERP is updated, then here it's updated. You don't have to copy and paste, and uh, you don't have to go edit property files on individual computers. That is exactly phenomenal. yeah. So if the data the source database changes. The, of course, the, the fields that are already filled will remain like this. But if I go back to the tool here, everything is updated. Uh, so, uh, and administrators usually know about SQL database queries, and they will like love this. So, I think it's one of the most popular item. Uh, I don't call this a tool because it's integrated, but it's one of the most popular items uh, in the PDM experts uh, toolkit. Uh, so the utils experts uh, that uh, Stephen is going to present uh, are tools for SolidWorks, but you should know that most of them support PDM. So if you browse in a vault and all that, the tools will handle this, but they are tools planned or made for SolidWorks itself. While PDM experts here are made for PDM, you may even not have SolidWorks installed on your computer, but, and these tools were run because they're dedicated to PDM. Um, so. I'm quite done, so I wanted to talk about activation and the PDM experts uh, tool. So if you need more information about programming and macros, you can just contact me. My email will be shown at the end. Thank you very much. Yeah, and thank you, because honestly, these are tools that have been developed over the years based on our needs and our customers' needs. So uh, they're so useful in that there's no fluff. There's no, oh, some someone in a random office decided this was necessary. It's someone doing their engineering job, ran into something that they had to do over and over again. And so we fixed it. And that's that's really what I love about this tool. And set. What's nice is it's our tool. So uh, it, often people ask me, hey, can, can you add something to the tools? And yes, I take note of everything and we we may do it, uh, in one month, in six years, but we know we keep all the ideas. But if I feel that the customer would like to have that like next week, it's our code, so we can just do it. And it's not like ask, asking something to SolidWorks and then we right. just have to wait. So we have the control on what we're doing. Oh, that's so cool. So here, and this is this is the part where I get to kind of blow your minds with just how many tools there really are. So just, just to start, just to kick it off, we have tools for printing, grabbing beam profiles, scaling, cutting, saving, referencing. We have tools for reporting quantity, tasks, colors, exploding configurations. We have a lot of tools. There's just a lot of tools, guys. But what I want to do today is I want to go through a couple of the tools that I really like personally. Um, now, they're not, maybe not tools that everyone would use, but they're tools that I specifically, when working in industry, would have really enjoyed to have had. And I didn't, and it makes me sad because I've spent so many hours doing specific tasks that 
yeah, could have been automated. So these are the ones I'm going to look at. Total personal preference. There's a ton of them. We have videos on all of them, and I'll give you more resources as we get further down the road. But the idea here is that I want to show you what it looks like to be using some of these tools uh, on the fly. So I'm going to jump over into SolidWorks, and we're going to have a little bit of fun with our first tool set. And before we even go into the tools themselves, let's just go ahead and look at what it looks like inside of SolidWorks, because I feel like people over uh, just kind of skip over this part all the time. But it's a directly integrated added, which gives you access to our support line. It gives you access to the website, different resources in order to get access to. And it's a nice little task pane add-in. But the real fun begins when you get to save time. So what I want to do is I want to take a look at the match property expert. And what that's going to allow me to do is to apply different properties across uh, my dimensions, across my part configurations without too much effort. So by kicking off the macro here with the match property expert, and I want to take this dimension tolerance and I'm gonna go ahead and capture all the information about it. So this captures the layer it's on, the precision, uh, what type of prefix, prefix, suffix, below, above, everything that you could dive into the settings and uh, really adjust. And I can pick and choose what I want. So in this case, I wanna go ahead and pull the tolerance and the precision for this dimension. And I'm gonna go ahead and just select my secondary dimension. And now that's going to update. I don't have to go in and manually create and save styles. I don't have to go in uh, and take time to copy and paste these different values. I can go in. Uh, I can go ahead and select, say, a different layer. So my layer currently here for, let's say, it's for important dimensions that are going to be uh, cut off or going to be measured specifically. I have those layers coming up as red. I can go ahead and select my part or select the dimension that's red, select layer, and I can apply that layer to my different dimensions. So you don't have to go and open each individual dimension. You don't have to go in and manually edit things. You can simply use the tool to grab things on the fly. And this applies in assemblies as well. This part's pretty cool. So a lot of times if you're working with something that has lots of configurations and you wanna go ahead and make sure that you match up the configuration of a specific part. Sometimes you have more than one or two drop downs. So if I select the part, um, I'm able to capture which configuration is being used. And I can go ahead and select my different components in order to change the configuration that's being referenced. So without having to go in the drop down and sort through 5, 10, 15 sizes or beam sizes, instead I can just select and apply the updated size as well or the updated configuration. So that's the match property experts. And again, you can see there's a ton up here. There's even more in the drop down, but let's just check out another one that I really like. And that's the prop experts. And this is the idea that we have custom properties within a part. Everyone's pretty familiar with working with custom properties at this point. And so in this case, I have a description, revision, I can have configuration specific properties. But a lot of times when you're working, you'll need to change multiple properties at once. And that's where this batch process comes in. So a couple things that are really cool off the top here, and I'm just showing you the highlights. So if, if you have an odd feeling that, oh, I wish it had X option, it probably does because we've been using these tools <laughs> for a while here. But I wanna capture whatever properties are in my active device or my active part file. So I can just select the active file or I can go and grab a different file to open up and use. And notice here I have description, revision, uh, but if I wanted to, I could go ahead and add a new property. I can also use a search function using, say, a, a search wildcard in order to find properties in different part files and actually assign a new value to the property. But for the example I'm going to do today, let's say um, I, I forgot to include a project number. All right. This is... I only use this because it actually happened to me and it was awful because I opened up probably 200 files in order to add a project number. And I was naive and young then, so uh, played myself. Uh, but let's just say we want to create a new project number called PJ200. I have no idea what that would be, but I can go ahead and select specific files or I can add an entire folder structure to my location. So here I could add files and within my 
files, I can say, ah, oh, yeah, all these files, I could have selected the top level folder. I can choose what to do with drawings or sub assemblies if I want to. So if I had uh, assemblies as well, I can specify. I can specify whether or not I'm editing global or local configurations. Uh, you pretty much get to do whatever you want to customize. And then I just hit a button and rather than uh, the intern Steven trying to open up all these files in order to update the project name on each file, it's going to go through and do it for you. And so this, I'm, I'm doing a basic one, I'm creating one, but you can edit, you can modify, you could uh, increment, you can do a ton of stuff. Uh, you can copy and create new files uh, or new properties rather. So you could take a property, clone it, and then uh, make an adjustment to it. And so this is really where you get to save time because rather than having to manually go and open a ton of different files, I'm able to do it pretty quickly. A little less quickly than usual just because I'm streaming, of course. But here, you can see that we had no errors. We have a full report of where each of these files was updated. Uh, and then, of course, inside of SolidWorks, we'd still have our custom property set up, and we're good to go. And so if I was to open up each of those properties, the custom property is going to be set up and, and operational. Now, what's pretty cool, let's jump into the next tool. Uh, and I'm switching back and forth between videos. Some of them take a little bit to process or are kind of boring in the interim. So I'm jumping back and forth between some videos here. But for this one, we're going to be using the Save Experts, which allows us to navigate saving into different file formats and even within the SOLIDWORKS files themselves. So here, this is where if you wanted to uh, bulk export, you basically create your plan or your strategy of how you want to save these files. So we can configure export actions like making into a PDF and SOLIDWORKS actions like saving a file or reloading properties here. So you can add your action, you customize, make your own action, set up what file type you want it to be exporting as. Are you exporting an STL? Do you want to make it a custom file name on each of your files? You can say where it's exporting, whether or not you're applying it to parts or assemblies, uh, your different specifications, basically any way you want to customize it. Then we can go into SOLIDWORKS and say, what do we want to do inside of SOLIDWORKS? Do we want to be replacing a sheet format? Do we want to be updating the sheet format? Do we want to change the material? Are we going ahead and adding the update action? So are we going to go ahead and rebuild? you get to choose and basically mix or match to create your recipe. Uh, you can also run custom macros. So if you're really big into macroing, this is huge because you can add that extra level of customization. You can add the really in-depth, uh, basically anything you can do in the API. And then of course you can save the file. I mean, that's the most basic functionality. And put those together into an action set. So you wanna do a couple things at once, absolutely no problem. We're going to create something that we do consistently. So let's say, replace the sheet format from 2019 to 2020. Then we want to go ahead and save the file and then export as a PDF. Awesome. We'll go ahead and generate these as your specific action set. You can then save off that action set, reopen that action set, uh, and apply it to, again, just different files and folders. So you don't have to open every single part. You can just point it at a folder that you want to use. So this is one of my favorite because I've fallen victim to going and updating sheet formats. And I've also gone and use the task scheduler to save off uh, different file formats. So I've done both of these. I feel really embarrassed that I could have done it all in one step and all I needed was a little bit of API and knowledge. So <laughs> thank you, Francois, <laughs> for making me feel like a fool later down the road. You're welcome. Right. <laughs> but that's the whole idea is that now it, you can save a bunch of time. All right, the next two I wanted to show you guys, these are pretty sweet in terms of something that I really wanted just basic functionality for uh, that are really useful when working with SOLIDWORKS. So here, uh, first one is the quantity report. So quantity report is pretty much exactly what it sounds like in that I want to know and to understand how many of each item I need inside of this assembly. I know that sounds dumb, but a lot of times when you are pulling a bill of materials, uh, it's based on the settings inside of SOLIDWORKS on whether or not something is included or excluded from the bomb. And so here we can override that setting and basically say, nope, I want to extract all of my components. Uh, you can also merge existing files if you wanted to, but I'm just going to 
take all this information and I'm going to generate an Excel file with my data. So here I have my quantity, I have the name, part numbers, my custom properties like description, material. I could have a custom column name if I wanted to. So here I have the quantity, uh, depending on what property I wanted to map it to. And I can pull off information much quicker than having to say, open a top level assembly, uh, make a bill of material, then go and customize all my columns and just try and find out how many of each item I have. A lot of times for M-bombs, you really just wanna rip off something real quick to get a general sense or general number count of each item. So this is a really convenient way to generate uh, that data. So I'm gonna close exactly. out that. You even in SolidWorks, uh, when we take a look at the BOM in the drawing, uh, there are three types of BOM, three modes, and none of these modes will show you everything with the whole the total quantity. You always have hidden items or you need to calculate, if I think about the indented BOM, everything's yeah. there, but you need to multiply the part by the sub-assembly. In this report here, we get everything once with the total quantity. That was a goal when we made that tool. Yeah, and that's it's huge because <laughs> I actually went through this the other day. There's no way to pull that data in SolidWorks without going and doing a bunch of random back work that then isn't updated when you update your assembly. So the fact that you can pull a quick bomb for uh, just the quantity is <laughs> super useful, super convenient. Another thing, okay, okay, so maybe maybe you're not entertained yet. Maybe you're not impressed. Well, all right. I got, I got one for you doubters out there. When we're talking about beams, this is one of the sickest tools because we can go in and we're going to use what is called beam cut experts. And beam cut experts is going to allow us to look at the beams, the weldments inside of our SolidWorks assembly. And we're gonna dive in and pull information from them in a way that SolidWorks just doesn't do. So activating beam cut experts here, You'll notice that I can manage the data. So I can choose what database I'm pulling from, what profiles I wanna be referencing, all of that. So here I could set it to whatever size I wanted. And all I have to do is process this table, select the size of the beam I wanna be using. So for example, I'm gonna be purchasing these beams in 24 foot increments. And this tool is going to go, oh, and let's say we, we have to make five of them. You know, this isn't, a, this isn't a simple project. We have five of these we want to make. And what it's going to do is it's going to first off generate a list of every single beam and how to cut them. So here we have the length we need. We have the number of 24 foot beams we need to purchase, which is 28. And every beam is itemized with how much we need to cut off into how many pieces. So here beam two, for example, we're going to be making a couple item 14s and item two, and then a bunch of item 17s. And here we can have a complete list. We can go even more in depth if we wanted to with the individual profile. Uh, we have the units that we're making, et cetera. So we have a ton of information in here, but the cool part is we can go and look at the graphical report of how each beam is getting used. So we can give this out to the shop floor and say, hey, here is the exact way that each of these uh, 28 beams we're purchasing need to get cut, where they're gonna be cut, how long each of the beams are, and what each component goes to. So this gives you a way to even predict the amount of waste you have. So here for this project set, I can see exactly how much waste material I'm generating, how everything is being cut without manually trying to figure it out, without having anything confusing for the shop floor. It's a super streamlined process uh, for coming up with these beam cuts. So, I mean, this is this is one of my favorites. Francois, well, anything to add on this one? Because this is, this one <laughs> would take a lot of time to do manually, that's for sure. And and it's fast, you get the, re the result. Uh, it, it doesn't take seconds. No, it's like instantaneous. Um, so that's one of that's one of definitely my favorites. Uh, the one I won't show because it's too embarrassing, basically exploding configurations. I'm not gonna lie, at one point I did it manually and went file save as for every single configuration. It's like three clicks for that one. But uh, that, that's too embarrassing. I don't want to show it. So let's let's dive into the next one, which is this one's pretty cool because it's all about printing. So in Print Experts, basically it allows you to print to different printers with different sized pages 
without having to go and manually open each SolidWorks file. So you select the files, the folders, or you can even go in and create a text file to control what you're grabbing. And this is going to allow you to print those drawings and files easily. So you can extract those files from the assembly or from the drawing structure here. And you have your configured printers. So you basically set up how you want each of these to print. So for example, for your A, A landscape, A portrait and B size, we're going to be going to the brother printer and you can set how each of them are handled individually. So let's get a little bit more complicated. All the larger size, the CDE sizes need to be uh, separated. And we also need to have B size portrait fit uh, or else it won't fit on the page. And you can customize that, set up your company profile. And then whenever anyone goes to print using the print experts, uh, it goes to the correct printer for you. And you can even do things like suppress errors, make sure uh, you reload the sheet format. So you're using the most up-to-date sheet format. And you can even declare specific sheets that you don't want to print. So it's a fully optimized operation where you don't have to worry about making printing the hardest part of your design process. So rather than having to manually go and open every single drawing and rebuild and then print them, because I've also done that specifically, which is why I'm bringing it up, because I think most of us have done that at one point or another, because we have three plotters we need to send to, and you got to manually tell it which one to go to where, and bada bing, bada boom, here you set up your profile and you hit two buttons and you're good to go. So this is this is the wizardry. This is how you really save that time. All right, so the idea of all the macros and, and the util experts in general, including the PDM tools, is that we're simplifying a workflow. We're making your life easier by decreasing your design time. You're not spending time on those repetitive tasks like opening, saving, replacing formats, which is gonna obviously increase your productivity and decrease your mistakes because it's a it's a automated process. It's not manual. You're not sitting there for two hours having to click six buttons in a row each time. And the long story short is that you're gonna take back your time. You're gonna save time and be able to use that to be more productive, to make more product, to finish your projects on time, rather than spending it doing the mundane tasks that we can kind of automate at this point in SolidWorks. All right, so now this, this is the fun part. This is where we're gonna wrap up. Thank you so much for attending. I promise you more resources I'll deliver. First off, webinars. Tons of webinars, actually ridiculous numbers of webinars over the course of the last couple of years here. Uh, that's on GoToStage, link below. YouTube, we also have an awesome YouTube page that specifically has a bunch of utils, experts, videos, amazing to check out. No way we could touch on all the tools. I, how many are there now, Francois? You said... <laughs> a little bit more than 15. Oh, goodness. I, I can't even count that high. I don't have that many fingers. Uh, and do I count, do I need to count the one that works in the background? Because we, oh. we don't use that tool; it runs by itself. So do I count it? Oh yeah, let's count those too. <laughs> and then of course us. So we're around. There are email addresses. Basically, reach out if you have questions. If you have a specific use case. So for example, uh, you've noticed that you're doing something time and time again. We might already have a tool that exists. We might be able to spin up a tool real quick for you, might be able to modify one of the tools we currently have. The world is really your oyster. It's more about whatever you can come up with creativity wise. And then of course we throw it at the wizard and make him figure it out. That's that's the game plan. So let's do some questions. Let's see. Do you wanna pull up chat and see uh, if anyone has any good questions for us? Um, there was one. Um... Okay, the tools we saw today, uh, are we able to program this ourselves? Uh, yes and no. Of course, these tools are, what what, what Steven show, shown was not, I don't call this macros, these are more softwares. Mm -hmm. Macros, you press a button, it runs and no question. So of course it takes a lot of time. As I said, we took years to build all this. Uh, but but yeah, if you have uh, like some more simplified uh, needs, uh, yes, uh, the API is open, uh, you can, do code by yourself, it, there is no cost or almost. Uh, so what you need is knowledge and time and patience. <laughs> uh, so, and maybe help, so we're there for that. So yes, it's possible 
this we don't have access to anything you don't have access to. So we have no specific or special access from SolidWorks because we're a reseller. For the printing, no, you don't have to configure this every every time. It's the same for save experts, the action set. Uh, you set this once, and then the next time you start a tool, everything is there. So for the printing, you just start a tool, you put the list, you create a list of drawings, and you hit print. So your setup is done uh, once, once, uh, once for all, unless you want to change it. So there's a new release every year, like almost uh, something like every October. We try to be uh, like almost at the same time as SolidWorks release a new version. So we we release both uh, enhancements, uh, new tools, and also of course fixes in the tools. That's it. Awesome. Well, thank you guys all for. Uh showing up and again you have all of our information reach out check out those videos and uh thanks for attending have a wonderful wednesday thank you very much bye steven bye principal